How's your trolling going then, Gary? Trolling? Um, your Dharma trolling. It's, it's coming along quite nicely. I'm sort of refining <laughs> my techniques. Um, I read, I followed up your links and uh, I didn't read the article. I just sort of guessed yeah. what it was about. Well, it, it really wasn't even necessary to read the article. Uh, well, Good. as far as I was concerned, I mean, as far as I was concerned, it was, what is the response? You know, uh, why are people reacting? Why are people not reacting? And why are people reacting in certain kinds of ways? And so on. Um, and you know, I, I found it just as interesting that, that you know, the people who obviously felt threatened and defensive about that, uh, but but also the, the the sheer number of people who felt superior to the to, to the people oh, who you've felt gone. superior. You've talking to Gary about his 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 Dharma trolling. Yes, oh, so I was I was intrigued. I, I did, as I said, did I did. You join? <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. Well, Actually, I did. I did. I joined the the groups. Well, I applied. I think to join the groups. I think I was invited by Gary. That so that was okay. And I applied applied to join the other one. But I haven't been. I don't use Facebook. I'm, at all so it's i don't have a uh, a mindset of of checking things um mm -hmm. on facebook and, and it's some presumably people who do do facebook do just sort of check daily because it, you you don't get any notification you have you have to actually go there to to see and then and then to respond to something that's been posted yeah, I know. Yeah, people do that. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm not into Facebook much either. Um, so I I don't even know how to negotiate it very well. But I've been I've been uh, accepted. Yes, also into into two groups I got, one by pretending to be human. It's <laughs> not <laughs> by did you? You lied. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shamelessly. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But it is interesting. I I read the, I read a bit about the study. I mean, just that article that you posted a link to, and it's uh, it's just interesting. And then the how, well, uh, yeah. As you said, you weren't so interested in the study, actually, just in the reaction to the study. Yeah, and I haven't looked at those yet. I haven't well, looked well, at... I've lied at the opposite. Well, I only looked at the reactions. I didn't look at the study. So. Uh -huh. Between us, we can... You've, you've followed the instructions better, Rupert. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I, need, I always do what I'm told. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the responses were the responses that you know you, you would have expected you know from you know from you know, highly sensitive people who think that you're accusing them of being superior i mean i sort of expected that sort of response uh but but i think probably what's more interesting is the people the people who feel superior to the people who are fearing, feeling superior so you know <laughs> <laughs> That, that's what I was more interested in. Levels of superiority. <laughs> exactly. The so, hierarchy. Sort of like an auction. Almost <laughs> like an auction. Um, so it, it just, yeah, interesting responses to, to that sort of, you know, it wasn't even a challenge. It was just sort of, you know, some, some woman did these um, experiments and this is what they came up with. And this is the terminology they used. I think, you know, just the very terminology, you know, it was a spiritual superiority. Sort of, um, I mean, I, I think we all know exactly what they mean by that. And we've all seen that before. That's not a, nothing new. Uh, but, but I think probably what uh, they played down was the fact that, you know, if you, if you acquire a new, a new skill, then you can, you know, whether, you know, Whatever that might be, you know, perhaps you, you know you, you've got you know some sort of you know psychological skill that you've developed or worked on, uh, and, and it becomes a, a tool uh, for you. Uh, can you say you are then superior? 
was this is what the article was trying to in, infer that, that if you sort of go to the, the effort of trying to work on yourself and try to um, you know, identify tools that might help you, then in some ways, if you feel that you are, have gained by that, then you, you feel that you are superior to, to, to other people. So, you know, there, there was that sort of flaw in the terminology that, you know, to, to call it superiority, I think was flawed. And it was looking at a different thing. Whereas, you know, in most cases, you know, people acquire skills and think, you know, oh, that's good. I've got this skill, lots of people don't. Is that superiority? I don't think so. Yeah, I would agree. It's interesting. There was a, a colleague I worked with at the university and he used to, <laughs> He, he had this interesting terminology. He would often say to students that they were ignorant. And he was being very precise because he, was, he, he would say, I'm not saying that you're stupid. I'm just saying that you don't know this. And because you don't know this thing, you're not capable of doing the next thing because you don't have this skill. So you're ignorant. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought, well, actually, yes, you, but normally if you say to somebody you're ignorant, then it's an insult. But he wasn't using it in that way. He was using it in a very precise way. So I think that it's a, it's a similar use of language to explain, you know, you're, if you're ignorant of something, it doesn't mean you're stupid. You just simply just don't know that yet. And if you do that, if you, you do know it, then you are not ignorant in that very specific area. So well, that is all technically correct, but but you know you, you know as well as I do that the word ignorant is emotionally loaded, and uh, and and will get reaction. That's the same way as uh, that the, those researchers used you know spiritual superiority as their term. Uh, they could have used something else, which was not a, a sort of um, get an, an emotive reaction. Which, uh, Indeed, uh, perhaps. Absolutely. No, I, 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 I agree. It's, but it, I, I think actually my colleague was using it not in an, not to be offensive, but, but very, in a very, in, from his point of view, I'm just using this word, but he did always have to explain it. But it, I mean, that's the same uh, that you, you get that in any uh, inquiring traditions, the same in science. You should wear that with a badge of honor that you're ignorant in science mm. because you, you will be. And, uh, and that's what is actually a motivation. And then you know a little more and you still be ignorant. Mm. Um, but it's it, so that is, uh, yeah, I, th I think as a as a teacher at a university, I think you may do such things. You, you might not be able to do that just around, around the dinner table with people, you know. But as a, as a university teacher, to introduce people to, to that kind of thing, I think is, a, is an opportunity to learn. Uh, even spiritually, if you get me, because to not raise to that, to, to, to that, you are ignorant. To to learn how to tolerate that and and be cool with it is one of those things that a good university might be able to teach. You know, I think. Yes, well, I I did think so. I mean, I, I, I and but I, I'm just interested in in because it, it does seem to be the same with this sort of, but I'm not sure whether exactly the same as superiority because that. I'm not superior if I know something that you don't know. I'm just less ignorant. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, we're talking about the study now anyway. I look at the choice of words and the choice of questions that they asked, and I just, I just smile and say, you know, <laughs> what was your... What was your beef in this? You know, because they're very low. One after the other question, really loaded and actually very ignorant, and so um, <laughs> in the bad sense of the word. And and so uh, I'm interested uh, with the 
with the responses to it, did people even take that seriously and were then offended by what was stated and found? Did they argue against that? Or did they just say, oh, well, look at the questions. I mean, or, or exactly the choice of words, you know. Is a carpenter, I go totally with Gary, a carpenter who has learned his trade for 20 years, is he a superior carpenter? May he think that he's a better carpenter than someone who's never held a, a, a saw in his hand? I mean, it's, it's, it's just weird stuff like that, you know? Uh, so I wouldn't... That, that that an article like that, I just shake my head and say, "Well, you, I, I hope you got something out of it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because it seems to be a completely mm -hmm. pointless exercise." <laughs> mm -hmm. But but didn't yeah. did people not notice that and say, you know, that's not even worth a comment? Sorry, but <laughs> well, <laughs> I see, all the people who didn't comment must have thought that. Yes. All the people, yes. And there was a lot of them, but you know, the, the, um, the responses were quite varied. You know, and there, there were a lot of people calling it out, you know, no shortage of people doing that. Uh, but, you know, like I said, my objective wasn't really that. And, uh, it was you know, the, to see the overall reactions of people and the variability in their reactions and the, their defensiveness or their, their sensitivity to, to certain words or terms. You know, it sort of the whole thing just stirred up a, a, a bit of a, yeah, a, a bit of reactivity, um, like in that that forum, um, the psychology of Epicureanism, Stoicism, Buddhism. Uh, that's a very big group. You know, I think about sixty thousand people or thereabouts, and fairly active, uh, and, and you know, quite a, a varied range of different uh, types of people who you know, are very various levels of knowledge uh, but, but yeah that, that was by far the, the most reactive that particular group a group which basically encompassed a lot of the dharmic philosophers um, you know so yeah that, that seemed to be the, the most sensitive area well actually that's not quite true that if I was just to do it on numbers but you know the statistics on this are completely you know meaningless uh, but, but there seem, seem to be, a, you know, a, a, on a pro rata basis, the secular Buddhism forum uh, seemed to be much more sensitive uh, than, than the other forums. But, you know, the, the sample size is not really statistical, it's just really a, a thumbnail guess. But yeah, but I've, I've been banned from that forum before, of course. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, you um, are a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. Did you lie when you rejoined or were you forgiven? <laughs> well, well, I think what happened was that, you know, they, they had a few, a few moderators, a few new ones. And perhaps one of the newer ones was uh, perhaps a, a much more doctrinaire type of uh, understanding of what a, what a Buddhist was and didn't like the way that I, I argued. So, um, I didn't like the questions I asked. I think it was probably more the case. Uh, it, just, it just seemed to be offended. So, you know, or, or take, take things uh, rather personally. Uh, because basically, you know, it can some, sometimes come across that you're attacking their religion. Well, you know, I'm not attacking it, but you know, I'm, I might well be undermining it. You know, but uh, you know, that, that's just the way it is. You know, you can, um, so yeah, the, there's a, a lot of, but yeah, but anyway, anyway, after I was banned by that person, I was unbanned by another person. So and that's happened. <laughs> that's happened twice, which I get banned, <laughs> unbanned. And, uh, make up your mind. Uh, you are a troublemaker. <laughs> well, it seems an odd thing to do, doesn't it, from a sort of secular Buddhist thing to ban mm -hmm. people at all? I mean, it's a. Well, I, I mean, there, well, there is no, there is no doctrine yet. Yeah, well, one hopes. Of there aren't any rules, so. Well, people do come into that forum saying, you know, uh, you know, thinking that there's actually this established sort of thing called secular Buddhism that you know right, sort yeah. of got its own you know, constitution, list of rules, and uh, you know, all the do's and don'ts and oh whatever. And of course, you, know, you, have, you have to tell them, well, actually, I'm, there's nothing. You're both frozen again. At all. 
You there? I'm 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 cool. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Sir. Yeah, I've I've lost Rupert. I think. Oh. Yeah, Rupert. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah. Well, I it actually when I when I looked at that secular Buddhism one, I I was kind of sorely reminded because it says, oh, you know, you mustn't post anything that goes against Buddhism, and this is a Buddhist site, mm -hmm. and and I kind of had in my mind, I, th I think, forgotten what secular Buddhism is. Like, it's very Buddhist. You know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I, exactly. Was, I, I had to smile because I was shocked about it. I said, why, why am I shocked? My God, have I moved mm. far away? Well, yeah. That, that, I, can, I, happen. Yeah. that can, oh my God. I, oh, damn it, you know. Um, it, 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 there is a secular Buddhism which takes this Buddhism very, very seriously, um, mm -hmm. and I, I, there was, yeah. Why well, well, shouldn't the they? That, it's in the name, but huh. well, yeah. But they won't let it outside its cage. That, that's the problem. <laughs> the, 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 they're trying to constrain it and uh, and focus it and, and uh, you know. And narrow your focus to, to that one singular framework and uh, to look outside that is starting to get into dangerous territory. That seems to be the, the fear. Yeah. And this, yeah. this const, constant, uh, a lot of uh, sites also get people who are, seem to be fond of calling people like me, uh, you know, or they're accused of scientism. Have you heard of scientism? It's oh, a, really? It's a new thing. Uh -huh. Seems, uh, seems to be the late, the latest rage uh, with uh, uh, perhaps you know people who are, are more I think wedded to traditional Buddhism, but uh, yeah, it's it's just too easy to sort of say that you know to sort of say oh you're you're you're, you're, you're this is scientism every time you sort of mention a scientific fact, uh, you know. That, that's ah. you know, not, or, or just, or just sort of make make scientific assumptions. You know that that's scientism. Uh, it's just sort of a, a neat little packaged word that uh, that uh, it can be thrown at you and sort of you know invalidate all your arguments in, in an instant. <laughs> it's, it's scientism, therefore it's you know it's no longer something. Uh, which I mean, that sort of follows the pattern of of uh, you know the, of cancel culture, where you have you know a so-called woke left, uh, you know, setting out to sort of cancel people who don't uh, uh, toe, toe the party line. Uh, you know, it, it's sort of the, the, they're very productive in, in producing these these pejoratives. These science, pseudo scientific pejoratives, which I can throw at you and invalidate everything you said, just mm. with that one, mag one, one magic potion. So it seems that some people are falling into that trap within within uh, some uh, secular Buddhist or Buddhist uh, discourse, uh, which is in including uh, the secular Buddhist network dot org. Um, uh, so what's his name? Got to, uh, not Winston. It's the other I forgot. Guy from New Zealand. Oh yeah, there him. I wonder if you were yeah. talking about yeah. him. But, yeah, well, my God. So isn't isn't secular Buddhism? It's very linked to Stephen, isn't it? Or I don't know, but but not that, really. So in terms of, uh, 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 no, I think. People knowing about secular Buddhism, I think certainly, you know, uh, uh, Stephen's out, you know, right out, out the front there. But you know, he, he's uh, taking ideas from all sorts of people, uh, you know, and and, and all you know, the other, you know, um, people in Body College. Uh, I mean, they've all got very very secular uh, takes on, on on Buddhism, and so this is you know, this did you know, Stephen didn't arrive at this sort of conclusion out of in isolation you know he, he pulled it together uh, in a, from from uh, quite a few other people around him in, in that buddhist world uh, who were thinking along the same lines 
uh, but just synthesized and, and wrote a lot better about, um, I think, mm. and, and very, very coherently about. Uh, mm. So I think to, to that extent, you know, um, yes, he's, he's uh, played an important part. Uh, but there's certainly, you know, he, he's been standing on the, on the, on the shoulders of, of a few giants here and there. So, but yeah. He's, he's, well, he's, it, it, it makes Stephen look incredibly uh, open-minded and, and uh, in taking things from all sorts, even in the secular Buddhist world, isn't it? Because yeah. what I just, from, from that first impression of looking on that site, it's... It's shocking for me in a way, but I'm very, it's so sad to see that you can make a thing out of secular Buddhism and at which mm. you, you know, you make, an, you make a belief out of secular Buddhism. That is yeah. kind of shocking to me. You know? it, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's like a, it's a commodification, uh, you know, basically slapping a label on, on something, wrapping it and, uh, and saying, this is it. This is secular Buddhism, for example. Um, it's just, well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've actually been still struggling with this and sort of finding, trying to sort of think about you know, how discourse can actually be created with uh, the impediment of, of, of Buddhism, basically Buddhism getting in the way of the Dharma, as Stephen would say. Um, uh, so, but yeah. What can you do? I've, I've actually just just a few hours ago registered uh, the YouTube channel on on the on the site. Um, they, they're trying to sort of get a lot of registrations of different uh, uh, secular Buddhist sites. Now I was a bit reluctant <laughs> just because of that word, but I thought, yeah. Well, I, I guess it's more a case of saying, well, you know. Are they, are they or are they not engaged in dharmic discourse? And the answer is clearly yes, they are. So, you know, I think it's, you know, even though I've, I've got sort of you know, reluctance, I think it's important to sort of you know, stay connected in some way and try to sort of, and try to sort mm. of keep, keep some sort of channels of communication open. So I think a lot of people have been, I, I, I guess, well, not a lot. I mean, there are certain people I know who I think have been um, perhaps frightened off or put off by um, certain approaches, um, which you know, typically perhaps you know, my approaches. So I just don't know that they're open to that sort of discourse outside of the framework of, of, uh, of the Buddha's Dharma. Oh <laughs> well, no, I can I can understand reticence. I can you know I can fully understand it, um, but I think it, it's I just sort of feel that there needs to be some way of um, engaging in, in in discourse about them, and just to, to sort of try and break it. Well, first of all, from my perspective, to break it out of its uh, this Buddhist shell, and to to, to sort of the scope things uh, wider, and, and I think probably even even more importantly is to to ask why. Why do we do this? Uh, why the Dharma? What why what is so special about it? Why is it important? Is it important? Uh, nobody really. Well, I think we may, may have discussed that a little bit, but certainly I, I've. Really, come haven't really come across anybody else who's, who's who are asking those sorts of questions. Um, you know, I've I've got certain answers to those questions, which you know may or may not be wrong or right. Uh, but yeah, it's just strange that other people do not, or other people who I've yet to, you know, who I have so far met, that that just doesn't seem to be an issue for them. Um, you know, that we should be taking all this trouble to, 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 to study Dharma. And yet, for the most part, all it is is a, is a self-improvement uh, technique, um, look, you know, a very sort of inward-looking orientation, uh, which I think, as I've already ranted on about, is, I think, only part of the 
the reason for Dharma. What do you think? Mm. Well, uh, it's it's interesting. Um, Because one would, you know, and, and maybe that's when we all showed our a communal interest the most, because we were in that group, and that was, you know, kind of the point that we would share our our stances and and ideas, um, and then we got the best uh, of that side of ours was shown, but it, it you know. Um, that it should be an internal improvement thing. Um, well, there is that, I guess. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I guess anyone who is, is working though in the world, and isn't that all of us, uh, notices mm -hmm. how that how that matters. Uh, in a way, much more than than um, uh, the internal improvement because it is there. Uh, I guess there are states when when uh, when uh, when the internal needs a lot of attention because I'm depressed or whatever. I need to look after mm -hmm. something big time, not to not go over over the edge, but. In, in ordinary times, I would say, you know, my internal landscape is so fleeting, so up and down and blah, 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 uh, that, that it is mostly just kind of, I guess, less important, I feel, because next minute it will be different already, you know, it, it is so responsive to what's happening, to what is heard, to what... Uh, bubbles up to the demands that are it's it's so so changeable um, so that the main practice is to just indeed stay in in the moment because then you know that in the next minute it will be different anyway so you don't I you don't need to look after anything because it's so transient but mm -hmm. in the in the way of communicating with others it feels like like um, uh, that things per perhaps have. Well, it feels to me that's where things might have more impact. Someone might chew on that, or um, my experience is that you know, especially if I if I work with others in my job, then. The Dharma has huge, it gives me huge guideline of how to respond to someone meaningfully and helpfully. Mm -hmm. That I that so that's that's my real treasure trove that that mm -hmm. I can share. Because that's not this is not my wisdom, it's the Dharma wisdom that can be shared that. Uh, helps people out, I feel. So it is, mm -hmm. the, for for me, the main treasure is in that sharing with others, indeed, but that's my job. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, well, and you, you do know, the also... same in, in your in your job, because as a as a mm -hmm. manager, as as a proprietor, as someone who kind of holds the whole thing together, um, there, if the Dharma attitude is shared, it can really make a difference, can't it? A, a, a noticeable difference. Oh, yes. I mean, I, I've, I've sort of dropped the temperature on, on so many different disputes because, you know, my business is disputes in the name, you know, which can get rather nasty at times. And, you know, most of my job is being very, very patient and waiting till people, you know, Get it out and sort of wait, wait for them to start responding in a in a natural sort of way. Um, so so uh, you know, I guess knowing dharma or knowing reactivity is is a tool that you can use to get uh, effective uh, communication, effective resolution, uh, without all all the baggage of. Uh, of you know, Emotional outbursts and and uh, and these sorts of things. So, 
Yeah, bringing down, the, I mean, yeah, so, so certainly in my organization, I mean, not that I apply it particularly well, but certainly that, that is my basic approach, you know, that, that is fundamental to, to, my, to my approach in handling all internal organizational problems. And I mean, and I think that's really what the Dharma is all about. Uh, if, if it's it's about you know, how we interact, you know, or or, or how, how we positively interact with uh, other people and groups. Uh, you know, that that is really the reason for it, the why. You know why? Why do we do this? Why do we, uh, you know, study this? Why? Why is the why are these sort of techniques or or, or patterns sort of uh, useful? And, and I, I think I've mentioned before that I, I sometimes see Dharma as as sort of a, a what a, a, a culture of leadership. It's, it's a leadership, uh, not a philosophy, but a, a, it's something that you need to to. Or one thing that you can embody to 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 to, uh, to secure leadership, and I, mean, I don't mean sort of leadership in a in a oop, you froze. That it's sort of for me. I I express it as leadership, although I think, you know, other people might see it differently. Well, yeah, I, I agree with that. There's this um, adult development um, theory thing, what is the name, Kiel or someone, uh, who, who describes this, the, the kind of pinnacle of adult development as self-transforming um, self-transforming uh, forming uh, leadership which is very dharmic I mean it has all the mm -hmm. it, it, um, it's it's a complete match to how a, a mm -hmm. person who would live in a dharmic way um, mm -hmm. would, would uh, conduct themselves as a leader absolutely and it's, it's called, it says so, self transforming leaders. What is it? Uh, self transforming. Oh, God, I can find it somewhere. Um, so he has the. What is it? Hmm. I've found a few references. It's. Um, We've got transformational leadership as a term. Awesome. Oh, and interesting. So that... Yeah, that, that looks, um, yeah. To find a guy again, haven't used it for a while. I'm that? rusty in that, those things. Uh, this uh, guy that uh, came up with this adult development thing. Um, so th there's um, a socialized mind and a self-authorizing mind and the mm -hmm. self-transforming mind, which is the highest one. So it's where you get your kind of... Um, uh, where you get your um, sense of of self from, really, in a socialized mind state, you look to others to validate you. In a self authorized mind, you look to yourself to validate you, and you get very well. That was you used to be the ideal leadership material, like this guy knows what he wants to do and he instructs everyone to do exactly what he wants and then he gets the results. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and so the, the, in this theory, there's one above, which is a very dharmic leader who can listen well, has a lot of emotional intelligence um, and um, 
uh, yeah, is a is a true uh, leader rather than an instructor. Is a is someone who inspires, who who um, uh, can adapt well if things change all the time. I just all sorts of things like that, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. and it if you look at it, yes, those would be all the the qualities that are that would be. Uh, very much in the in the in the four tasks almost you know from ethical mm -hmm. behavior to non reactivity and you know someone mm -hmm. says you're ignorant uh, you would say uh, yes I know um, mm -hmm. you know what are you going to teach me mm -hmm. so it's 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 this non reactivity thing you know where uh, try try to um, catch me out there it's not possible mm -hmm. whereas mm -hmm. so. So I think that is um, uh, the best, um, well, you studied sociology. Mm. I guess that is one of those things that, that have been developed in sociology. I can't remember the guy's name. So yeah, it has to do with leadership. Mm. Yeah, I've actually been, been thinking about the why of of Dharma and, and you know I've actually been reading and uh, watching a lot of YouTube videos about warfare and, 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 and ancient ancient uh, battles and, and battle strategies and and the wars between all the you know the, the different European petty states o over the centuries and and just uh, what, what struck me was that, you know the world has just been at, at war constantly you know war seems to be a, you know, a constant state it seems to be a, a natural state uh, and, and the lack of conflict or, or warfare seems to be exceptional rather than you know the norm uh, i mean i don't know whether i could be you know looking too much into this you know, <laughs> watching too many um you know uh, films about civilizational collapses and, and uh, intertribal warfare. Uh, but, you know, you know, being immersed in that for a few weeks, it just sort of, there just seemed to be this underlying thing that unless there was conflict, there was, there was sort of, there was something perhaps even wrong with the society. And that stability actually, or, or this, the type of peace that we might, that we've probably experienced over the past, you know, I'll say 100, 150 years is, is actually quite exceptional. You know, despite all the wars which we think we've had, you know, compared to not, not quite a long time ago, we were one hell of a lot worse, um, especially on, on low level local, uh, local conflict. So I guess when I'm when getting back to the why, uh, I mean, it, it just seemed to be some sort of almost evolution, evolutionary imperative that uh, that certain men rose up, took power, and and then and then sort of mobilized uh, other men to go to war against whoever. Uh, and and uh, it just seemed you know, over and over again, you just sort of get get the same same pattern of uh, of you know warlords in, in, in adjoining uh, uh, places, ha probably having to, to expand because they needed to, 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 to support their army. And that the only way they could support that army was, was continuous expansion. Um, so, so it was sort of a, a vicious circle. Uh, but anyway, uh, but, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, and so would you say that, uh, you know, the relative peace that we have had in Europe, and that wasn't 100% for 60 no. years or so, that, that you know, it's a, it's a kind of exhaustion rather than an insight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think so. I mean, if, mm. if you, if one thinks and, you know, and if, uh, uh, and a few maybe exceptional minds having an idea of, of, um, putting together structures, unifying structures that allowed conflict resolution in, in, mm -hmm. a, in a peaceful way up mm -hmm. to a point, but they are falling apart again. So mm -hmm. actually that would 
fact, I would hint to that this was just like a, an exhaustion phenomenon rather than one that is, OK, we really got to do this other because this does this is just too horrendous. That mm -hmm. insight seems to be um, maybe in, I mean, then we thought that we had it. And I don't think that can be if if one mm -hmm. looks at what's happening in, in the States at the moment, clearly there's half of the population there that has no such insight and religion doesn't help and um, education doesn't help because there's there's fundamental levels, aren't there, of, of education. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So why does it not work? Well, you know, that's what I've been thinking about. And I've, I've, now, one way I've been thinking about this and one way I think that uh, um, too many uh, Buddhists think, or even secular Dharma think, that they, they think of Dharma as, as a, you know, a, a way of sort of getting some sort of universal truth in which, you know, if everybody believed this, everything would be just dandy. Uh, you, know, that, that, you know, that's sort of a religious approach to, to philosophy, you know, saying, you know, if we can only sort of spread this, this philosophy out, uh, everybody will believe it and everything will be great. Uh, but, but what if you know, people who thought dharmically uh, were, were just the exception. What about if we, we were just sort of the peacemakers and, and uh, you know, the other crowd are, are, are the war makers and that, and that we're, we're basically got these roles within evolution of trying to balance <laughs> each other out. <laughs> I like it. I, I think that you got a lot going for that because you know, numbers are, yeah, yeah, I think you got some evidence for that. <laughs> so the best we can hope for is that we kind of even out and, and exactly. keep some things, some bad things from happening. Not all. Yeah. But, but, but pulling, pulling things into a balance. Right? Yeah. Like, Oh God! <laughs> so, so you know we cannot change the psychopaths, and we cannot change the people who follow the psychopaths. You know, or we can only influence them to a certain extent. And I guess mm. that the role of the, the dynamic is to try and sort of pull back that 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 <laughs> wave before it sort of goes too far. Uh, and I guess you know, the, the the warlords think that the only way to advance society is to invade, you know, whoever. Uh, to mobilize you know, the, the band of brothers again. I mean, and of course, it's the band of brothers that are the problem. Uh, well, in, in, in large part. Uh, so, you know, unless you can control the bands, the, the brothers, the brotherhood, uh, you know, you will always have conflict. And, and I guess in, in some ways, ancient warfare, you know, ancient sort of, you know, you know going back to say, you know, say two centuries before it became super technological. Uh, you know, warfare in, the, in those days was very much hand to hand. You know, it was really, really personal. And of course, it's it's really hard to kill someone. It's not something that uh, you know. Well, I think there's plenty of evidence to show that you know uh, that you know infantrymen engaged in, in warfare, you know, perhaps only one in 10 of them actually ever shot their, their rifle, for example, those, those sorts of statistics, showing that it's really, really hard to force someone to kill someone else. It's really hard. And, and, and you've got to do certain things to force men to do that. And, uh, and, I've got, and that's actually one of the things I've been sort of watching in these uh, battle scenarios is, is how and, you know, I used to wonder, why are they always doing these formations? It's just so inefficient. They're just sort of standing up and waiting to get shot down or waiting to get sort of, you know, an arrow. But they're all packed together and all moving as one body. And there's a reason for that. And, and one of the main reasons was is to stop people running away. Uh, because, you know, if they were just stupid it out along, a, you know, uh, individually without sort of a, you know, a sergeant behind them forcing them forward, they just say, well, fuck this. Why should I kill anybody? You know? I don't really hate them that much. You know? uh, it's, it's, it's really hard to force someone to kill. And, and so one of the reasons for those formations was, was to stop people running away. Uh, wow. And to sort of say, you know, if, if you don't stick here, if you don't support your brothers right now, you know, the guy at the back is, is going to be, you know, 
the, the, the drill sergeant is probably going to be more deadly than, than, than the enemy you're facing. So, you know, there's basically fear on both sides, you know, fear of being, you know, uh, mm. executed or killed for, for running away uh, or killed sort of in hand-to-hand -hand brutal conflict with, with some, some other tribe who's equally being forced in the same way. Um, and so once you're in that, 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 that group, that band of brothers sort of, you know, facing off the enemy, uh, you know, running away is an option. Uh, going forward is, cause, is really the only option in order to, in order to support your brothers, because the, the only thing that's going to save you now are the people right next to you. And, and if they don't help, then nothing, nothing will. So uh, that's what, one of the things I got out of uh, you know, doing this uh, research was just, you know, the, the, the military formations that, that evolve, evolve precisely because it's just so, it is really hard uh, to, 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 to make somebody kill somebody else, unless you can sort of whip them up in, in some you know, frenzy, which is you know, the, the, one of the reasons why these uh, uh, solo terrorists uh, are pumped up on, on uh, amphetamines and, and all sorts of other nasty sort of speedy drugs. You know, they, they, they get dosed up on that before they go out to, uh, to war or out to sort of blow themselves up uh, because that's the only way they can do it. Uh, you know, they, they couldn't just go out there and, you know, without any sort of, you know, they, they may have some sort of, you know, religious fanaticism that may, may well carry them, but even, even that is not enough for, for most terrorists. You know, they need some drugs as well or some other threat uh, in order to make them uh, um, do what they do. Mm. In the, in, you know. So, yeah, so yeah, one of the biggest... You uh, get these gangs, don't you, like in the former mm -hmm. um, uh, Yugoslavia, where, where, where you, you get the bands of brothers and there's no drill sergeants. They just really go for a bloodbath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That can happen, that something oh, yeah. is whipped up when, into a frenzy. When, I don't know the, if they're all on drugs. They might. I don't, I don't know. If, if they're already welded then, then into, into a group, you know, if, yeah. they're, if they're solidly welded into a group, then they're extremely dangerous. You don't need drugs for those people. No, uh, no they, 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 you got it. Yeah. But for some guys sort of been press ganged into, into, a, into fighting some war for some lord who, you know, he's got no idea. Uh, he knows, all he knows is that the, the landowner is divine and, and if he doesn't uh, fight, uh, I don't know, something will happen. Uh, so, you know, and so, so that, you know, so certainly you do get bands of brothers forming, within, but, but in general, for, for most of these wars, it seemed, you know, most of the men were, were press gang and, uh, you know, had to be forced to actually kill. Um, because they weren't professional military. So is your argument that then uh, the the dharmic, my, dharmically minded guys have a have a kind of a calling to um, share their peacefulness much more than they might have they they might be inclined to, just to fulfill their role as a kind of a, a leveler. Uh, mm -hmm. Because so it, indeed, Dharma is not an internal thing that you just live happily within your or with yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really not your main thing. You got to make that more public. You got to spread mm -hmm. the word. You got to calm the fires around you. You mm -hmm. got to speak up if a mad person proclaims themselves chief leader and uh, mm -hmm. wages war and wants to build walls and stuff. Is that mm -hmm. your argument? Well, yes, and, and you know, I, I think it's, it's a very dangerous position to be in sometimes. Uh, you know, if, if, if a, you know, a Dharmic, you know, should typically you know, speak truth, whatever that truth might be. And uh, there, there are certainly a lot of, uh, you know, of, of the psychopath class who I sort of imagine as the opposite to a Dharmic. Uh, who, who are fully convinced of their own rightness, uh, that the only way forward is to, is to sort of, you know, band together and, and uh, you know, into, into tribes and, and to sort of, you know, 
hate on and, and expand and, and uh, do all these things, which is basically the antithesis uh, to, what, to what Dharma is. So, you know, I'm, I guess I'm sort of suggesting that, you know, we're not the only player in town. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, the the anti-Dharmics are also fully convinced of their own rightness, and that, that this is the only way for humanity to, to go forward is to you know is is to embrace is, is to sort of to be tribal and 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 reactive and all these other things and that they sort of deify that type of um, uh, what approach to life or. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess I'm just uh, thinking in terms of a Dharmic being an exception rather than a rule, and and that it's it's not the only player in town. That there's other forces within humanity which are also fully convinced of their own rightness, uh, <laughs> who who we who we would think of as very wrong, and and uh, absolutely it's our duty to actually you know, pull pull them back and try and. Uh, pull things back into an equilibrium. Um, <laughs> well, so there, there we have it, a case for a messianic dharma. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, but, but and you... people, people, <laughs> yeah, the problem, the problem with messiahs is they, they don't seem to, to live very long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Very good.